Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday Tips and Tricks, the show that shows you how to do anything tech related, answers your questions, and even some video production questions all surrounding Airsoft. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, and this time we're breaking from the norm of what we normally been doing with some show and tell and actually doing some hands on tech here. So we're going to be looking at a very simple but very important tech kind of maintenance thing that you need for your Gearsoft guns, and that is motor height adjustment. Over time, the motor of your Airsoft gun, even sometimes in the factory, is not set right. So it can either be in too far and causing undue stress on your mech box, or even worse, seizing up, where the motor's been pushed up into the gun too far, or if it's backed out too far and the teeth aren't engaging in the gears inside with actual gears on the motor, you can actually be doing damage to those gears. And I'm gonna do a little show and tell here. If you guys can see the motor, right here and you're gonna see it kind of moves up and down. So if you kind of look at that there, you'll notice that it moves up and down and that's done by the motor plate that's on the bottom of the grip. So at the bottom of the motor plate, you'll see in the center there is a screw there. On this one, it's a flathead. In most guns, they are flatheads for adjustments and a few are Allen key adjustments. You'll find some Allens here as well, but nine out of 10, you're gonna find a flathead. Now by turning this screw, it pushes the motor farther up into the gun by turning it clockwise, righty tighty, goes in, and lefty loosey backs that motor out. So what you wanna to try to do is find that sweet spot where the pinion gear right here is engaging perfectly with the bevel gear inside of your gun. They need to mesh up just right, and it's usually by sound. If it's backed out too far, it's gonna sound grindy and whiny, and if it pushed in too far, it's gonna sound a little whiny as well, but more strained. Your rate of fire is gonna drop if you're shooting in full auto. So I'm gonna show you two quick tips on how to get this thing adjusted right and not mess up your gun. So, I'll be starting with my Elite Force 4 CRL here on the tech bench. And the first thing you wanna do, remember when working on any gun, is make sure that mag is out, there's no BBs in it, anything like that. And if you have a battery in this, take the battery out. You're gonna be working on any kind of gun. Now in our case, we're doing motor height adjustment, so we're gonna want that battery in there. So, gonna hold the battery here for the gun, and we're also gonna be working with the tool of the trade, which is a flathead screwdriver in this case. Again, if you guys are using a motor grip here at the bottom that has a different adjustment point other than a flathead screw, it's gonna be a metric Allen key. So make sure you have metric Allen keys not the SAE, which is the standard American uh, empirical size. Make sure you're using metrics, otherwise it probably won't fit just right. So once you've got the gun, we're gonna go ahead and get this battery inside of here. So we're gonna get the stock slid off the back and a battery plugged in. Now, before we plug the battery in, you have to assume that any airsoft gun is loaded. So make sure you're doing this outside, someplace not anywhere near you can break anything because you actually are gonna be dry firing this gun to get everything set right. So iPro is critical because you know what? I've shot a lot of guns that I could have sworn were unloaded and that actually still were. So I'm gonna put that battery on the back here. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna point this in a safe direction, actually at the ground and fire a couple rounds just to make sure. So in this case, <clears throat> we're gonna take it, battery in, and we're gonna be working on that motor height adjustment. So what's really important here is getting that right sound, making it feel good. So what I start to do is I usually put it in semi-auto and turn it. Now this one's set pretty good. So I'm gonna show you what happens when we put it in too far. So we're gonna turn, I'm gonna give this thing one, I like to do half turns, that's a full turn in. And I'm gonna do another full turn in. There you go. Hear that? That's terrible, I shouldn't even be doing that. So what's happened is that motor is too far down in the gun, it's putting stress up on that bevel gear, the pinion gear's pushing it up against the mech box, and it's causing a lot of just noise, and it's just grinding in there. What it's also doing is it's drawing a lot more juice from our battery here, which is a bad thing. So you wanna make sure that your motor's set right for optimal battery life. I mean, your battery's dying like in 300, four or 500 rounds, your motor might be in too far. Also, over time, it'll get sucked in. I've seen that where motors get pulled in as the parts kind of loosen up or the shimming's not correct around that gear inside the mech box, the first gear, which is your bevel gear. So that's in too far. Now I know I put it two full turns, so I'm gonna do one, two. That sounds pretty good right there. We're back. Now I'm gonna back it out some. So I'm gonna go back one and do a single shot. I'm gonna back it out two, and three. 
Now this one's not making much noise. I can't back it out far enough, but what'll happen is you'll get that similar grinding sound when you have it backed out all the way. Now the idea here is to keep firing this until it sounds the smoothest. It has the less grinding and the least whiny sound. I think I found the spot now. So what I do next is my test is I'll flip it over into full auto and check the rate of fire. If you notice, if you, you tighten this thing down, it'll not fire at all and it gets whiny like that. So you want to make sure you back it out till that rate of fire is nice. So I think I found the sweet spot. You want to do that. Again, don't run it in too far. Don't take it out too far and you'll have a good balanced airsoft gun. I'm going to take my iPro out because I've actually unplugged the battery there. So guys, that's a quick tip on motor height adjustment, making sure it's set correctly and getting it in the right place. Also, if your motor screw tends to back out a lot, like you're actually having it walk on you, it's coming out all the time, a little bit of Loctite around the thread, screw it back in, will fix that problem. It's a little bit of pro tip. Also, if you guys want to use something like uh, Teflon tape, like plumber's tape, that works really well. You can pick it up for about 99 cents at the hardware store. So guys, I hope that tech tip helped you. Remember, make sure your motor height set correctly. Always keep an eye on that because it can walk over time, especially as that motor grip heats up from a lot of heavy use. The motor can either back out or get pulled inside of the mech box and either really drain your battery or cause damage to your internal parts. So guys, if you have a question you'd like to see on Tuesday Tips and Tricks T3, let me know in the comment section below. Just pop it down there and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out with some basic tech or advanced tech or even stuff around video production or whatnot. So again, thank you for watching the show. I appreciate all the feedback and all the comments. And if you have more questions about motor height, feel free to drop them right down there in the comments below and I'll do my best to get them all answered for you guys. So thanks a bunch and I'll see you on the next episode of T3.